Well, hello, hello. It is Saturday, March 29th, uh, 28th. March 28th, Sad 29th? Okay, March 29th. And um, I haven't shown it. Uh, I did go up for another flight, a second flight, um, a couple days ago. It was a beautiful day out. Uh, we did rework some of this baffling up here. It's kind of hard to see because we're still no lights over here. We're getting close though. We're going to be replacing all the lights in here with some LEDs. Hopefully get some good light just in time to be done with all of this building. But hey, we'll still do some updates as we go along. But uh, reworked some of this baffling up here. And uh, I can't remember if I talked about this on the first flight. Um, we didn't have, this is something we've tried. We, we tried riveting this, but this wasn't riveted together. And um, this baffle, after I took off, it, it blew forward. The air pressure that, that comes in through here had enough air pressure that it blew this forward. And it was, it was rubbing, you can see where it rubbed right here. It was rubbing on this flywheel and kind of put a mark on that or kind of put a little groove in it and then kind of chewed that little piece up right there. So we did this, did some uh, rivets in here, did uh, a rivet down here, did another one here. And then, you know, uh, I think I would talked about on that flight how we'd had these high oil temperatures the whole time I was flying it. Um, uh, cylinder head temperatures were high, but that's to be expected. And that's what you want during the break-ins. You want that high, high uh, temperatures and uh, good pressures in there. But it was really heating things up. Uh, so, got back from the first flight, discovered this, uh, and this was kind of what we did to try and fix that. And went out and flew a couple days ago. Cylinder head temperatures were fine. They were in the low 400s. Um, and uh, I, think it, I think this helped a lot doing this, but the oil was still really high. I was running 230, 235 on the oil, and that was only, um, that whole flight was only 30 minutes I was able to get uh, before I had to come back because of that oil temperature. Just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. So, after that flight a couple days ago, the, you know, we looked at the baffling on here and the marks other on the baffling, you can see where the, you can see where it's on, rubs on the cowling where it's making contact. So it's, it's got pretty good contact most of the way around. There's a few little spots like right here where it kind of it kind of folds in a little bit. So we might have to rework some of this. But for the most part, I was pretty happy with cylinder head temperatures. I think they were staying okay. Um, but we're also suspecting that this front baffle here is is getting blown in. So we need to figure out a way to kind of secure secure this stuff down so it doesn't, so this doesn't blow in. And so this, well, we did that. We put a rivet there to try and hold that. But this corner can blow down as well. So we're gonna take a look at some of this stuff today, see what we can figure out. And um, it's a cruddy day, so we're not even going to get the airplane out started up or anything. And, oh, uh, what else? Oh, man, I'm just going on and on and on. Uh, follow up on the oil seep that we had here after, fir after first flight. Continental recommended that we just go fly it again. And uh, like I said, I got out for half an hour and came back. And there was just, you can see, there's... It was just a really, just a little bit of oil that came out of that, that spot there. And then on the back side of that sump, there was a little bit that ran, but not nearly as much as when I was out the first time. However, that first flight was almost two hours. Uh, so this kind of a yet to be determined on that. So we'll see what we get. Uh, like I said, no, we're not going to run this today. Just going to do some investigation and maybe a little bit of a change in configuration up here on the baffling. See what see what we can figure out. So yep, here we go. All right, I just showed a little bit of a. Well, actually no, I'm going to wait. So uh, I just got a borescope up in here and was looking at some of the spots 
and you can't really see it in here, but there is a little, there's a couple spots up here on that, that seal that are, have a ripple in them when we put the cowling on. Yeah. And what we're finding is we've got a, a ripple in that, uh, that seal about right here, and it's on both sides. So we've got a ripple there with an opening. And on the back where these two pieces come together, there's, uh, there's, we're getting a hole back in there. Uh, there's a spot up here on the corner on the baffling that we're gonna need to seal up on the engine baffle itself that has, uh, didn't get sealant in it. And like I said, there's a ripple here. Um, I think we've got a ripple back in here too that we're gonna have to look at. And this, this piece here that comes up uh, and uh, yeah, can't see it. Um, there's the top baffle that goes across left and right. The, it, it lays down in here, but it's just a little bit short. So there is a little bit of an opening right up here on the top that we'll, I think we're gonna have to put an extra piece of baffle seal on that to get that sealed up. And then where that comes back, there's another piece comes forward, and that piece meets this piece. We've got those tacked together, but I think we need to do another rivet in there uh, to see if that will seal up. So, uh, I did find on the oil cooler down in here that we do have oil both on the inlet side and the outlet side uh, in the hoses and everything, so uh, that checked out good. So we're really kind of down to, I think, just management of air flow through the, uh, through the cowling. But um, yeah, we're gonna keep poking away at here for a little bit. Hey, here's something I wanted to talk about, and I know I had covered this in a different video, uh, but it's these uh, striker plates here for the door where the latch uh, goes down over the top of it. And um, we ended up getting, uh, because when we would shut the door, there would be a little, there was still some gap in here, even though we put, you know, the, uh, the piece from Rands on there. And I was trying to figure out a, a better way to do that. Um, and also, when we would close the door, it would kind of grind on there. It's that aluminum, the metal on metal would grind. So we went to Home Depot, and if you can see this, we got some. It was in the ear, the like home, uh, the uh, sprinkler underground sprinkler section. There was a piece of PVC that we got. It was just maybe I think 10 inches long. It was just a PVC little piece of pipe. Oh, there you go. It was this stuff. And I took and cut a section out of it and then used VHB to stick it on over the top of that existing one. Oops, then I dropped it. Uh, we stuck it on over the top of the existing one and it was just enough to suck that door and get it nice and tight on here. And also, it's it's got a little, you know, lubric lu uh, lubricant. It's not lubricated, but it's the metal uh, from the latch goes on the plastic and it gives it really nice smooth action uh, when it closes, keeps it real tight. And also if this, when this wears out, we just cut another piece, take this off and just replace it. So um, I couldn't remember if I talked about that. I showed it originally when I had used some, I think we determined it was carpet, uh, carpet tape to hold or rug tape to hold a rug down onto a floor. And that stuff didn't stick at all. So we just used some uh, that thin, clear VHB and uh, stuck that on there. So it seems to be working pretty well so far. Hey, one thing I can't remember if I talked about last time was this heater hose. Uh, the way it's routed down here, when we initially had put this in, ooh, let's see, it was just, it was clearing this, the oil cooler fitting right here, it was clearing that and then goes into here. We put a plastic bag over here while we were testing this today. Uh, but it was clearing this, 
but engine vibration running the engine, it kind of migrated up a little bit and started rubbing on this, this, uh, the end of this fitting. And it was rubbing right here. So we could see there was a little mark on it. So I decided to take another piece of this scat tubing, just cut a little square of it and with silicone or use the RTV, the red RTV on that, silicone that down. And then I'm gonna put another glop of RTV on there to give it a little extra protection so that when that's down there, if it rubs on there, it won't rub through the hose. And I just have this zip tied on for now while it's holding that on there until it gets sealed up. Pretty dreary day today. It's like uh, low 30s, like 33 degrees, like just barely above freezing, misty, cloudy. We're right down at minimums here, I think 200 overcast, and the visibility is a little better than it was before, but um, yeah, it's not, definitely not a flying day today. All right, we are done for today, and uh, we did do a little more work on sealing up these, uh, this baffle here. Uh, one thing I did notice is that once we started flying, um, it's kind of hard to see. Let's try this light in a different, different angle there. You can see that the cowling rubs on that, that uh, baffle seal. So it's really easy to tell where the baffle seal was not sealing up uh, on the cowl. So we did find a couple spots, um, did put some more RTV in there, also had to seal up a little more on the back over here, and we had some various spots along here, these corners down here, over there. Uh, also added a couple more rivets uh, on this to maybe make that a little stiffer. Don't quite know what we're going to do with this section here yet. This one's kind of, uh, I think that's going to be our problem child right there. Um, this top part, we did add that piece on uh, so that it's making more contact up where the, the hump is on the top of the cowl. Added that there, sealed that off, and uh, ended up doing a slice out of this corner here. And that will lay down a little a little better and seal up. So. We'll see how this all goes and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes on the next flight. Don't know when that's gonna happen and we're kind of got cruddy weather here for the next while. So anything else to add? No. All right, hey, thanks for watching the video. Hope everybody has a great day and that's it for now.